Hey, welcome back. It's another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jellin from Mr. Excel. We'll be joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. This is our episode 98. Any of these in those? Oh, hey, welcome back. This is a heck of a question here. Uh, so we have uh, the question, any number that's found in C2, is it also found in E2? So any number in C2 also found in E2 and oh my gosh, this is crazy. I could go pull out the book Excel Guru's Gone Wild. I remember there's some crazy array formula there, but I sure as heck can't remember it. It would expand all of these and break them into words and do this and do that. I don't know, maybe Mike will show us that. But uh, for me, this is straight VBA. So Alt F11, insert, module and then type this function get match we're going to look for comma look in so we're going to pass two arguments to this function the name of the function get match that has to be returned by the function so i initialize that to zero and we start looking from one until the end and look to see if we find the dash now that's going to miss the last pair of numbers so i'm going to uh, come back and get that one after the uh, for next loop here check to see if uh, this string, this two-digit or three-digit or five-digit or 50-digit number is found in the big string, the look-in string. If it is, then I take the old get match, which was nothing, add this string, and then add a comma and a space. Again, we'll get rid of that at the end. Loop through, look for all of the digits, uh, and then, then finally come back and get the last digit, the one that theoretically doesn't have a dash after it. If uh, we found anything, then I want to use the left of the answer, uh, the total length minus 2 to get rid of that last comma space, last comma space. So let's give this a try. We'll come back here, we'll say equal get match of this comma there. And 2, 11, 89. Now, I chose to put commas in between. I don't know what the heck they're going to do with this. Maybe you could put, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm hoping that I'm going to get to use text to columns on the answer here. I, I, but I'm not sure where they were headed uh, when they sent in the question. Get match of this comma that. And uh, same answer. So it doesn't sort them. It just gives them to you in the order that they're found here. I don't know if that's good or bad. All right, Mike, I'm hoping that you pull out some amazing array formula here and, and get the point um, because I had to cheat and go with VBA. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Man, get match VBA. But what? What are you talking about? Cheating because you had to use VBA? It's actually the reverse. I'm the one that's going to have to cheat and use a formula because I don't know VBA. All right, so that means you get the point. All right, um, so we have two uh, strings here. I'm actually going to just extract each one of these numbers so I can visually see them here. And actually, this situation, the characters will always be two characters long. They'll always be separated by a dash, and they'll always be one, two, three, six of them. All right, so I'm going to use the mid function to extract. But actually, before I do that, what I really want is I want a, a number incrementer. Because I can see the first number starts at position 1. The second number starts at 4, then 7, 10, 13, 16. So I need to, inside of a formula, uh, inc have a number increment, 1, 4, 7, etc. So I'm going to start with the rows. I'm in B5, so I'm going to type dollar B dollar sign 5 colon B5. This will give me the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 as I copy down. Not quite what I want. F2 in that uh, selected range. How about if I multiply this by 3? This will give me 3, 6, 9. Well, the increment is correct. 1 to 4 is 3. But I really want to start at 1, so I'll simply subtract 2. Control Enter to repopulate. So there's the, the starting position of the number I want to extract. F2. And why don't I just put this inside the mid? There's the text. F4 to lock it, comma, that's the starting number each time, comma, and the number of characters. Each character is always too long. So there, control enter to repopulate our edited formula. All right, so that, in essence, are, are the individual numbers uh, from here that I need to look up and find if it's here. Now, I'm, I'm going to think of this like a lookup, right? But the first trick is, if I say, hey, some lookup function, look up this within this, this is a single text string. And I really want one six individual items. So I'm going to use the mid function to create 
uh, a little lookup table with the six items here. So the text is right here, comma. Now starting number. In this example over here, we had a single starting number, but here we want to give it all of them. And we're going to use array syntax. So curly bracket, 1, comma, 4, comma, 7, comma, 10, comma, 13, comma, 16. Now, if these were varying lengths, then this wouldn't work, but they're not. So that'll work fine. There, there's another good uh, aspect of this array constant means we type the array in. Array constants usually do not require control shift enter. So even though this is an array formula, the array constant does not require control shift enter. Now, each character is still going to be two here. So now if I highlight this, it'll extract all of them, F9. So there we have it. That's our lookup range in essence, control Z. Now I'm going to use the match, which is a lookup function. I'm going to say, hey, match, look up that. It will find the position within that lookup table. I'm going to do exact match. So now this will deliver a number. Now I can see right now I'm going to need to lock this one. Now watch this. I'm going to control enter. I didn't control shift enter. I don't see any curly brackets. They're not needed here. I double click and send it down. Now you can leave it like that. Or if you want to see a true where it's a number, then you just use is number. And it will give us a true. So this, this formula is saying, is anything in here over there? And we have three trues. I'm going to just copy this and paste it. Actually, I'm going to copy both of these, Control-C, Control-V. This one will work if I put it in edit mode and drag this over here. And I think I have to do the same thing for this one. OK, so this formula is saying, is that one? But this is the incorrect range. We want to ask, are any of the, the digits we extracted from here over there? So that ought to work. Control Enter, double click, and send it down. All right, uh, throw it back to Mr. Excel. Mike, that's crazy. That's crazy. First of all, I love the incrementer over here, right? The, the getting it to increment by 3 and then just subtracting 2 to get it uh, back to what you wanted. Once you had these numbers, I really thought you were going to do an equal find. Look for this uh, two-digit number within this string up here. And you know, of course, since it's separated by dashes, that would tell us whether it was found or not. But uh, you went over and above with the uh, generating that array and then putting that right inside the uh, match or uh, I guess in theory the VLOOKUP match is the way to go. That is incredibly cool. So uh, two very different ways uh, to uh, solve the problem. And uh, I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next week for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is Fun.